Alright guys, in this video we'll see how we can use some specific JavaScript operators when dealing with data and how they can facilitate our daily programming activities. Namely, we'll take a look at the nullish coalescing operator, the conditional ternary operator and the optional chaining operator. Alright, so let's say we have the following user. It can perform actions such as run, walk and squat. Based on those actions, we'll return is running, is squatting, is walking. Uh, the user has a name and a role. And now we would like to compose a function which will modify it based on our preferences. So let's create such function. It will be a get user. It will accept an user. Of course, it will return a modified version of this past object. For example, just to return the username Okay, so basically we would like uh, to return an object, so this is our empty object, where we will have a property of name. If we are passing a user which has this key name, uh, we will return this. In other cases, we will return unknown user. Uh, basically, this is our optional chaining operator, which is very similar to a TypeScript where we can check a property of an object chain without having to check its parent for existence. So it's like an optional operator. And then uh, this is the knowledge coalescing operator, uh, which returns its right hand side when its left hand side is uh, null or undefined. Whenever our name is null or undefined, uh, this is the default that we'll get inside of the new object. All right, let's run the function with uh, get user and then we'll pass our user um, object literal. And we see that in our new object, we have uh, the name. If we run once again the function, but this time modify, uh, for example, this parameter to name one, we'll see now that we have an unknown user just because uh, we are here in the second case. So that's a very nice a combination of the two operators when we want to pass data and to filter it. Imagine we have uh, hundreds or thousands of users and with such an easy function and check, uh, we can uh, transform the initial object into something that we would like afterwards to use. All right, now let's explore the conditional ternary operator. What we will do is just to expand the returned object where we'll be returning a calculated property, let's say is admin, and we'll base it on the user role. So we'll calculate whether the user role equals to admin. And if so, we'd like to return yes, and in other cases, a no. This is the conditional ternary operator. So we are evaluating the left side and returning on its success or truth, everything that's behind the question mark. And whenever this returns false, we'll be returning everything after the column. Once again, let's run this code with the row of admin. And we'll see that our newly composed object will have is admin equals to yes. And of course, if we change, let's say to admin one, uh, we see that our user is not an admin. Again, very useful a little operator for performing queries on a data. Okay, let's expand our function. And this time we would like our get user function to pass another parameter, which is let's say run. And uh, we'd like uh, this get user function to accept a parameter action and to calculate property based on this action passed. We'll call it activity and it will depend on the whether the past action parameter is contained within the keys of the action object here. So we'll write it like this, user, then uh, the optional chaining operator and then actions. So we'll go inside of this object, then it's actions object and we'll check whether it exists and then we'll dive into the past parameter action and we'll return it or we'll return in other case unknown action. So that's interesting. The 
optional uh, chaining operator gives us an opportunity to perform deep checking of uh, attributes within an uh, object uh, tree, such as here where we have uh, nested objects. Well, we will change a little bit the code. We will not use the dot here, but let's say uh, those brackets, which perform absolutely the same function. And we will see whether the user has an action with the key of run. And we see the activity is running. So it went to the user, then to the actions, then to the uh, run uh, property, returning its value. All right, so the next thing I would like to do is to perform additional operation on our data. And let's say that we would like to invoke a third party service, which will return us information based on the past data. I'll mock this service here with the usage of promise and set out. Basically, we are returning user data whenever we pass a user object to this get user details function. Of course, here you can pass uh, your real fetch request to a service. Now we can use uh, this external functionality which is basically asynchronous inside of our get user function. So for this, let's first add the calculated field, uh, such as user data, and it will be based on one field, which will invoke this get user details functions. And this field will be called user data. So it will be a variable actually here will perform the call to get a user details. So it will be uh, const uh, user data equals to await uh, get user details. And we'll pass our user inside. So basically we're creating one variable, one constant, and we'll wait with the current user data for this function to perform a lookup and to return us the data. And then we're passing to the returned object. That's what we're doing. And for everything to work correctly, we need to name our function also as asynchronous and also to call it with await. So the main goal of what we're doing is to be able to have a field which relies on asynchronous fetching of information, such as user data here, and to be able to calculate it on the fly and then return us a computational object or an object with dynamic lookup properties based on the data. So let's run. And we see after some time, we have the resulting object with the user data field calculated based on what our service has returned here, the get user details uh, function. All right, guys, that was the demonstration of those uh, operators. I hope uh, you find the uh, information practical. And if you like the tutorial, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you.